on some. Okay, yeah. All right, well, let's uh, let's just roll with this and I can power through. Yeah, worst case scenario, if it keeps doing like what it did last week, we're just gonna have to unfortunately just tape the show. Ray's in the house. It's you. <laughs> oh no, we're gonna turn into raw being taped during the nineties. <laughs> It'll put a lot of butts in the seats. <laughs> Maybe, actually. And hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of the Just Us Marks Wrestling Recap Show. I am the Athletic Geek. And joined this week on the other end of the Tin Cannon String is CJ. Yep. And making his return easy. I'm back, and I'm better than ever. See that shirt in full? It's, I mean, <laughs> there you go. It's just, hey, yes. I, I got that. Back from, back from vacation from the world, from the great, here, I, I keep trying to mix this up a bit. There we go. I am back from vacation from the world's greatest city and the world's greatest country, known as Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Boom. Um, oh, I'm no. i make that my thing. Um. Well, it's wrong, because you're not in uh, St. Louis, Missouri. No. Or Pawnee, in... St. Louis, it... or St. Pawnee Louis, Indiana. Missouri is not the world's greatest city and the world's greatest country. No, it is. Tis. Tis. It's either that or Pawnee, Indiana. One of those it's definitely cities. St. Louis. Pawnee, well, Indiana, my too. City, my city and my country respect women. Okay, sorry, that was a low blow. <laughs> I know. And welcome to the political advertising for about two seconds. No, no, we don't do that here. Even if it's even if it's things we uh, may agree with, we don't talk about that on here. Um, we don't talk about Bruno. No, 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 no. No, not worth giving our energy to things we have no control over. Unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> What's the difference? Exactly. But yes, Toronto was fun. Reuniting with friends and family, and Lisa. Two of my closest friends, and I saw their kids for the first time. They were adorable as hell. And, uh, oh, yeah, and, uh, I went to the bus street race, and on the IndyCar's calendar was Indy Toronto. But you don't have Indy a bridge. Race. You have a bridge, though. What do you mean I have a bridge? You don't yeah, race over a bridge. How can it be the best street race if you don't race over because, a bridge? Because we, we race down Lakeshore, Lakeshore Boulevard. We race right next to Lake Ontario. Why but that's not a bridge. Over? Yeah, why don't you race over the bridge? We don't have a bridge big enough. Ah, oh, there, you there you go. There you go. Also, if we had a race on the Gardner Expressway, it would be literal hell. Just That's another story. <laughs> and mean... hey, it was awesome seeing the Iceman Scott Dixon actually win a race while I'm wearing a Scott Dixon shirt, unlike what happened at Indy. Yeah, you know. And I met Roman Grosjean, I met Marcus Erickson, and uh, McLaren's driver, Alex Poulot. We'll, we'll see how that goes. It, it may end up, he may end up being nothing driver, because if he, if he wants to push that issue, we'll that could happen. We'll see. But yeah, we have, um, we'll see. we have a lot to talk about yeah. this week. If you've uh, never seen this show before, this is the Just Us Marks Wrestling Recap Show. I'm at CJ locally. I'm at Easy at All In Starcast. We love wrestling. We love talking wrestling. We love sharing our love pro wrestling with each and every one of you out there. However, just like each and every one of you out there, our opinions without have any normal fan. We're just fans. We're not any insiders or special people or or uh, wrestlers. Uh, we's just a, a bunch mm -hmm. of marks. And um, yeah, we're just a bunch of fucking marks. A bunch of fucking marks. Yeah. And, um, yeah. I'm also low-key missing MJF these days. <laughs> I think a lot of people are. Like, the MJF chants are like the CM Punk chants now. Um, maybe that's what they want. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. Hopefully, oh. or else it's yeah. gone terribly, terribly wrong. Now, all right, now before we talk about Dynamite, am I allowed to just rant a little bit about All Out? I mean, you can. You can, but we're probably gonna just we're probably gonna tell you why why you're wrong, though. Okay, look, was, Chicago's fine. Now Reno was good. 
but if you're going back to Chicago, why the fuck didn't you get the United Center? They there was have a summer you, camp. Yep, yep. yep. See, I'll let you take this one. Okay. Yeah. So when we were in Chicago for Forbidden Door, that was a big scuttlebutt because that's the first night that they rolled out the All Out banner um, in a show, and they've done it every every show they had since. But we were talking about it with a bunch of people, and so some some investigative sleuths from the city did did some diving. And although there's no actual shows booked for the United Center, which is what you will hear a lot of people talking about, they both have it the entire week, including that weekend, for like a summer camp thing that okay. they do with inner city school kids every year. Okay, so it's taken. I'll take the that. Now Arena is the second biggest. Um, venue that's not open air that's, in Chicago, but, but the fact that when I heard about the Buffalo, the, you know they're going, they're doing AEW in Buffalo. It's like, and it's the fallout of All Out. Everyone was speculating, holy shit! Wait, All Out might be in Toronto, AEW coming to Canada. My hopes were getting up, and then I heard All Out is going back to Chicago to Now Arena. I'm like. Uh, uh, for fuck's sake, this is exactly what I've been ranting about for many goddamn episodes. Look, yeah. it's okay to have All Out in Chicago, but at some point, that pay-per-view has got to grow. Yeah, maybe. Like, look, I don't mind the shows if they do, like, I, don't, I really don't mind if they did Dynamite or Rampage, though. That's always gonna happen. And same goes for Jacksonville's Daily's Place. You know, that's always gonna be, you know, AEW's "Quote unquote home," but for fuck's sakes, like come on. Uh, anyway, but if I hear there's summer camp going on, whatever, and if DePaul wouldn't let us take Wintrust Arena again, whatever. But well, Wintrust doesn't see as many people as now Arena. Yeah, Wintrust actually is like two to three thousand people less. I swear it was. I thought it was bigger, but whatever. Nope. And I know we'll definitely never get Rosemont because. Certain somebody would be pissed off. It's it's still yeah. as far as seating goes. It's that's why I'm always fearing about whether AEW will ever go to Toronto Scotiabank Arena compared to our much smaller venue, the Coca Cola Coliseum. And that so and call it in the Coca Cola Coliseum. It only seats about eight thousand. So yeah, maybe it's not a bad idea though. For marketing and yeah, like, if we had like a rampage, but but li li listen, uh, listen, listen. Uh, yeah. Maybe it's not a bad idea for their two biggest pay per views to be in the same city every year over the holiday weekend, so people can plan around it. You can always plan to be in Chicago Labor Day weekend. Or Las Vegas Memorial Day weekend, and go to those shows, and then you have Revolution in full gear, can be in different arenas. They could have had the Rogers Center. The Blue Jays have like a two week road schedule, so I thought, okay, maybe we could have a stadium show there, or at least maybe just occupy the lower bowl of Rogers Center compared to you know what Russell King and maybe the Tokyo and Dome. And maybe they'll do that for like full revolution. gear or revolution. Well, let's see what. But it's, it's not it, it, it's not bad marketing on their part to go. Hey, Labor Day weekend, we're going to be in Chicago. Make your plans. One of our two biggest pay per views is going to be in Chicago. Memorial Day weekend, we're going to be in Las Vegas. Our biggest pay per view of the year. It's in Las Vegas. You want to see the biggest pay-per-view of the year? Go to Las Vegas. Yeah. And, and I think that that idea is supported by the fact that the all-out ticket sales were gone in an instant. But you can still go to the show if you buy the If you buy a bundle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bitch, so, I, I heard what the prices were, and I don't even have to look up to see what the hell they were. It, like, the combo deals really are not that bad, mm, considering that you're getting three shows. You're getting just, three yeah. live shows, because Rampage mm. is not taped. Yeah. So that's, you know, Wednesday, Friday, and then the Sunday show. Comparatively mm. to what the all-out ticket prices was, it's very affordable. 
Um, and, and there are still reasonable tickets available, but that tells me that the people who bought them all up are not people that are locals that can just like, oh yeah, well, okay, I'll just, I'll go ahead and I'll go on Wednesday too. We, we are semi-ish, we're, we're in the range, we're in driving range, we can't go up on Wednesday. We, we can't spend a week there to do yeah. that, that's expensive. <laughs> Yeah. And and we can't be away for that long. But yeah. so I was like almost I almost was thinking about like doing all out for Labor Day weekend about that. And so I thought no. So I have like other travel plans. And plus I am gonna be in Vermont the second last week of August. Actually no. Yeah, well like the last weekend of August, uh, for uh, my late godmother's uh, celebration of life that we were supposed to do in twenty twenty. Until shit hit the fan legitimately. Hmm. So. Yeah, just, um, you know, it, it, it's not a bad business call on their end. I get the frustration, but I also get the whole, like, hey, these are guaranteed to sell out and it's a destination. It's a destination. And then the other two pay per views, you know. I could also I see for out. I could also see Forbidden Door, like I know Chicago's a good spot for, it, but like maybe Forbidden Door could like move between like Las Vegas, Chicago, and New York. Honestly, I would put Forbidden Door in the Californias. I could see them doing that. Yeah, it would make the travel a hell of a lot easier. Yeah, but but then, you know, for anybody in the Japanese community, you know, they want to take. Long as flight to L Los Angeles was like boom, there you go, you got California right there. The time difference wouldn't be a too much of a pain for them too. Same for the Oceanas. Yeah, the time different. That they're, they're yeah. just, wow, Japan is a day can, ahead of us. Or maybe they can do Forbidden Door at the Tokyo Dome. I, think I, uh, I don't think they'll do Forbidden Thousand. Door at the Tokyo Dome. Yeah. Oh. Like just do like this year's in AEW territory and next year's in New Japan territory. Now they might do it in Japan, but not the dome. Yeah, like I, I, I'm like the, the the Tokyo Dome is kind of like running that as a very, 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 very big deal for mm-hmm. very, 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 very special occasions. So, I know this is going to be a hard pill to swallow for a lot of people that like are AEW first and not really hip on New Japan. But I'm gonna let you on a secret: AEW isn't as big of a deal to the New Japan audience as it is over here. So, the Tokyo Dome, now maybe, like, Budokan, maybe. But not not the Dome. And, um, yeah, speaking of New Japan Pro Wrestling, the G1 Climax has kicked off. And it's really weird this year with four different blocks, but uh, real quickly going over the results so far. On night one in C block, Aaron Hanare uh, won, started his first ever G1 Climax by beating Hiroshi Tanahashi in a big shock for me. Uh, Will Ospreay defeated El Phantasmo. Jay White defeated Sonata. And Kazuchika Okada defeated Jeff Cobb in a damn, damn great match in A Block. Um, Night two, Taichi and Tomohiro Ishii had a great match. Uh, Toru Yano uh, defeated Jonah by countout with his uh, shenanigans. Zack Sabre Jr. defeated Kenta in another good match. And Juice Robinson with an upset of Shingo Takagi. And then on night three, Yujiro Takahashi upset David Finley in his first ever G1 Climax. Tama Tonga defeated Chase Owens. Bad Luck Fale defeated Lance Archer. And in another big upset, Hiroki Goto defeated Tetsuya Naito in what the announcers are saying may be Naito's final G1 Climax. So if it is the last G1 Climax for Tetsuya Naito, definitely not starting off on the right foot there. So... Yeah, lots of lots of things happening. Um, this is CJ's first ever uh, time watching the G one. What do you what do you think so far as a, as a newbie to this uh, tournament? Um, it's 
not bad. It's it's um interesting because you know you you have to rely on the commentary to understand things unless I want to send uh, clips to my personal translator. They do they um, they do have uh, English subtitled uh, press conferences on the YouTube channel. Yeah. They they do. Um and you can you can get what's going on if you listen, but you do have to pay more attention to things than watching normal TV and I am a multitasker, so that is an adjustment to me. Um but it you know, you got to like pay attention to like okay, this is this is just this match. This is an actual tournament match this is this tonight we're gonna have like three tournament matches tomorrow night we'll have one this will be this and this will be this and and the way they keep the scores is a little bit different than what an american tv show and 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 for those that don't know in the g1 climax um you get two points if you win if it's a draw you get one point each and a loss is no points so lots of different directions they can go in with stories and it's probably the closest thing that uh in modern wrestling now that like makes it feel like a real sport like tournaments like this in the best of super juniors because you have like oh well this person wins here they win they get the nod but if this person wins then this person loses then this other person gets the nod and i think like the, the best example of that was in 2016 um the, the year Kenny Omega won the, the G1 Climax, uh, Kenny made the finals and pretty much with the way the scoring was set up the last night, it was going to be uh, Okada versus Tanahashi and everybody just kind of assumed one of them's going to win and get the two points and then be the undisputed winner of their block. But then Tanahashi and Okada went to a draw and because they went to a draw, they tied with Goto. So, and the, the, because Goto beat both of them, and they're all tied, he had the tiebreaker over all them, so Goto got to go to the finals. So it's kind of like, it, it's... It's almost like the NFL playoffs. Kind of like, well, they're, they have the tiebreaker over them, and they get this, so... You know, it, it's... This person, this person losing doesn't just affect them. It affects this person and this person and this outcome. Yeah. It, there's, it's, there's, there's a lot of spider webbing. And I can understand that, like, I can understand how some people maybe aren't into this. Like, I can understand how, like, if you grew up on WWE and, you know, like, I'm not even saying, like, just WWE, but, like, even just American wrestling where it's like, hey, these guys wrestle and this, that, you know. I can see how this is not something that this may be too much work to follow, not just because you're you're watching Japanese wrestling on an app for Japanese wrestling, but just I understand the complexity of like, eh, maybe this is too much work to follow. I I do think that they make it easy on the commentary. You just... You do have to pay no, more no, attention no. to commentary. No. Yeah, but I mean, and, like, I can also see, like... an American who watches WWE, sometimes you program your brain to turn the commentary off. Right. But what I am what I was just kind of saying is, like, I could see how somebody would maybe go... I don't want to think that hard. Like, I, I want to relax and watch wrestling, you know. I, I don't want to think that hard of, like, well, wait a minute. Why... Why is it Goto and not Tanahashi or Okada? Like, that's stupid. I just want, make it a four-way. Who cares? You know, like, I could see, like, somebody who isn't into that sort of thing just kind of going, ah, that's too complicated. That's too many things to follow. I'll stick with AEW and WWE. But I, mean, I guess I see that point. It is kind of nice, though, because in every single match, it seems like they're like, oh, well, here's a little like nugget that we left on the table that we could or co- could not come back to later. Here, here's a little piece from like four or five years ago that we're finally going to draw back to. Yeah, it, it's kind of it, it's very. They keep stats very well. Like mm-hmm. it's it's really much. Um, it, it's kind of like you know, kind of getting back, and I made this comparison you know last week the. 
the G1 Climax is almost like the Indy 500. Or it, it was like the Indy 500 for a long time, where even though they had their own world championship, that was kind of considered not as big of a deal being the IWGP champion as it is winning the G1. Kind of like an Indy car. It's like, ah, you won the Indy car championship, but did you win the Indy 500? And that's kind of the way it was looked at. And that's not so much the case anymore with the G1, but it's still like the way they bring up you know, past stats and, you know, nobody, you know, nobody has ever lost their first two matches and went on to win. And, you know, um, this person's never lost to this person in 10 years of being in the G1 and won their block. You know, it's like these little stats, you know, that you have, like you have like in, Maybe not just racing, but like other sports. No one's ever came back from this. No one's ever, you know, been a wild card and done this. No one's ever not been, not qualified here and gotten there, you know. So that that, that part I think is interesting, but it's, it's, it's a lot more sports centric, except for like some of the... <coughs> Some of the, you know, matches still, especially now, New Japan's really, really westernized a lot of things. Um, like, other than that aspect of it, it's still, the, the, you have a lot more of a real sports drama to this, I feel. But, yeah. Um, let me see if I have a, yeah. Going through the blocks now, like I said, in block A, Okada, Yano, and Fale all have two points. Block B, Tamatonga, Jay White, and Taichi all have two points. Block C, Hanare, Goto, and Zack Sabre Jr. have two points. In block D, Takahashi, Yujiro Takahashi, Juice Robinson, and Will Ospreay all have two points. Um... I know the one thing they're building up is um, since it's smaller blocks and less matches for the finals, um, there's a little bit more of a sense of urgency to win every match or win, win your matches because in the past, you know, you could theoretically go oh, start out 0-3 or you could lose three matches and still make the finals. Um, now you can't. So, you know, since there's only there's four blocks instead of just two with more wrestlers... There are less wrestlers in each block. Yeah. And then... Semi-finals will be A and B block wrestling uh, each other to go to the finals. And C and D wrestling each other to go to the finals. And then... the Those two winners meet in the uh, match to determine the winner. So we'll keep you updated in the coming weeks for uh, more of the goings-on in the G1 Climax. Also, this week was Rampage. Um, start off with John Silver and Alex Reynolds versus Brody King and Malachi Black. Uh, this was a good match. Just didn't really like seeing uh, how easily the uh, the Dark Order were defeated again. Not at all. No. Um, no. Ring of Honor World Championship match, uh, Jonathan Gresham versus Lee Moriarty. Um, it was okay, but we kind of, yeah, with, 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 later on, you know, they announced that Claudio would be getting the title shot at Death Before Dishonor this Saturday, so, yeah, looking forward to that match. Um, Chris Statlander and Athena versus Charlotte Robin Renegade. This was okay. Uh, the Gun Club had a uh, confrontation with the Acclaimed. It was a decent segment. Um, you know, shit was real when Max wasn't doing a rap. <laughs> and then, uh, I went to bed before the main event, uh, Private Party versus the Lucha Bros. I was sick. I didn't want to stay up and watch it. <laughs> All right. 
So that was Rampage. Now let's uh, light the fuse and bring the boom. Let's talk dynamite. Starts off with Brody King versus Darby Allen. CJ, take the lead on this one. Oh, no, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'll jump in. Don't worry. This wasn't a terrible match. Just kind of... I mean, I get like uh, there's a lot of people saying like uh, Darby didn't lose any anything by losing a match to somebody that much bigger than him. But I'm getting a little sick of Darby loses. The, the storyline is Darby loses and then he comes back in a, you know, crazy match and then he wins. So I, I'm, I'm thinking that's the direction they're going in. Kind of getting a little tired of that. Then at the very end, um, <laughs> um, Sting gets the black mist in his face, so I wonder if Sting is going to go to the dark side, like Julia Hart did, and Pac, and all that stuff. Dear Jesus, I, I hope so. I thought Sting was already a dark guy. <laughs> no, but he's going to be a bad guy. Maybe. He's going to be inducted into the house. Um, he got misted in the face. Then uh, you do like a fake, like joining the NWO only to just kick their ass and join the wolf pack. <laughs> uh, but then Miro comes out and stares down the House of Black, and we the and closed his eyes. Miro closed his eyes, and the violence stopped. So how can we tell? He was wearing sunglasses. Oh, you could tell. Yeah. I didn't see. See, I was I was in New Japan mode, so I was paying attention. <laughs> All eyes on Miro. Uh, I was also very happy because, like, finally, fucking Miro's gonna turn again. Because I don't like babyface Miro. I I mean, I really like. Is Miro. he a ba is I, he a good guy? Really? Yeah. To me, yeah. I don't think he's supposed to be. But the reaction tells me that he's a good guy. Yeah. Oh, but he came from the bad guy entrance. Yeah. Um. Okay. Next up, we have uh, John Moxley and Wheeler Yuta versus the best friends. This was a good match. The commentary had a lot to this match with um, even Orange Cassidy's few little quips with William Regal were entertaining, and Excalibur did a really good job. Um, you know, setting this, you know, talking about all this and adding all the history. So, um, I like that part. I understand you don't want the Blackpool Combat Club to lose, but... If you don't want the Blackpool Combat Club to lose, and you want to make the best friends look stronger, don't book the match. Don't book the match. It wasn't something that the internet was screaming at you to do. Like, it, it didn't make the best friends look weak. It didn't make them look horrible. It wasn't a burial. But it wasn't great. Like, okay, well, here was another tag team that a year ago could have been in contention for the titles that are now just cannon fodder. And I get it. Somebody somebody has to go. But why? Why? If, if they don't play into the wheeler Yuta switching sides angle more going forward from this, then this was pointless. Hmm. Yeah. Um, I think you got to have a winner and you got to have a loser. Like, that's just that's how it works. But I'm getting a little, I'm just, uh, I feel we don't get, we're not going to do disqualifications on this brand. No, and it's fine that we're not going to do like draws and disqualifications. God. <laughs> but you have a bloated roster. So you can't tell me that you can't find two other scrubs. We'll get into the scrub binding in just a few minutes. <laughs> you can find more scrubs to put them over big. Like, the finding of the talent is clearly not a problem. It's it's the choosing of what talent is doing what right now that I think is a problem. <laughs> but I don't want no scrubs. 
Scrub is the guy who can't get no love from me. <laughs> Due to inflation, Scrubs will be interviewed now. <laughs> so we're going to have now an AEW Scrubs mashup? Or, I don't know, crossover? Um, AEW never, never Dark read. is being repackaged as AEW Scrubs. All right. Um, have Swerve in Our Glory Tag Team Championship Celebration. This, I liked uh, them getting interview time. Swerve and uh, Keith Lee, especially Keith Lee, because he hasn't like. But what were your reactions last week that they became tag champs? Kind of like. Did not expect that. Yeah, like what happened there? Like, I did not expect that. Like, I'm not, like, saying it's bad, but it, I am just kind of saying, like, I really hope they're not just holding it to, like, hot potato back to the Bucks. Yeah. Or... I, I don't mind it. I was just like, whoa. I don't mind I, it if they... I don't mind it at all if they, like, roll with it. Now, if this is just kind of like a WWE, you're going to have the belts so you can break up. Or you're going to have the belts just to lose them back to the Young Bucks. I'm going to be kind of mad about that. And I did kind of get mad at all the, like, you know, matter of principle wrestling fans. They're like, that's what they should do. It's like, didn't you get all pissed when Cody Rhodes won the belt from Sammy to lose it back to Sammy? Like, so why was it bad when Cody Rhodes did that? But when the Young Bucks do it, oh, that's okay. What's up? No, because I was. He's gone. I'm here. Say, like, me. Oh, now we're gone. Now we're gone. Now we're gone again. Hang on, guys. It's, um, it sucks. It's stupid. This would be a good time to remind you, amazing viewers, that Athletic Geek has a Patreon that you can support. I don't think that's the problem there. Never mind. Well, just well, raise maybe. money for some connections. Five tens are good. Fifties are better. Hundred dollars, and I can cook you dinner. Yeah, we'll just go with that. Yeah. <laughs> we accept Canadian monies. Accept uh, all. We accept Canadian all human. We accept Canadian. all human monies. That's what All we do. All human money. All human uh, money. Exactly money. <laughs> yep. All human money. Come that here. Crypto. I won't take crypto. That's yep. not human money. Yeah, that's, that that isn't human money. money. That's fake. <laughs> yes. Although Tom Brady did give a guy a Bitcoin to get his like record-breaking ball back. Yeah, he's like, "Ha ha, jokes on you." It was worth like sixty-four thousand dollars. The ultimate work. Yeah, well, if you buy a an athletic NFT, they're worth a million dollars. One million dollars. Yeah, so all this is going to be left in here, but um, yeah, <laughs> we, we we need to be humans about our monies. Uh, so yeah, so uh, a thousand can buy us blink. Yeah, so um, I might mess with this to see if it gets um, deleted. So if you're still seeing this, I was not able to do that, and you get this long awkwardness. So thank you for sticking with this video. Um, past that. Um, MJF's music for, like, our wait time music, since it's public. I, it's yeah, that's true. Yep, somebody else watching. Yep. Um. But yeah. So, where the fuck were we? Uh, was... We were talking about 
tag team champs. Tag team yeah. champs. Yeah, we, we, I really hope they don't do that. That's just kind of something that I hope doesn't happen. Um, just the flip-flopping, but we'll see. Um, but, yeah. Um, oh, other than that, I, the, the same was fine. You got Keith Lee. Um, some live mic time, which was great. Mm. I, I, I don't I don't I don't I don't listen I don't listen to rap music so like the rest of it was lost on me. I'm not saying it wasn't good. It's just I don't listen to rap music, so I'm like, yeah, okay. Like kind of how probably a lot of people that listen to this feel when I talk about race cars. That's how I was feeling with the rap music. I I I will say it. It wasn't good. It it wasn't good. Like even if. 60% of your audience knew exactly who that was. The punch looked terrible. Yeah. It, it looked worse than Snoop Dogg's Frog Splash. And all respect to the big D O double G, that was a really bad frog, frog Splash. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It was. You're a rapper. You're a fantastic rapper, but you weren't a good wrestler. And rapper, he was rapper. even worse. And I can't vouch for his rapping skills. So it kind of fell flat on its face. Like Tony Nese did when he barely got touched. Which was also bad. And then we went full WWE and smashed a fucking cake in somebody's face. Because why the fuck wouldn't we? I just, I want one fucking wrestling segment where the cake just gets eaten. Or untouched. <laughs> that's all I fucking want. Yeah. That, that's, 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 that's wrestling, that's wrestling lore cake. though. If, if there's a cake in the ring, someone wears it. I just... I just, like, that's the ultimate swerve, bro. That's the ultimate fucking swerve. And also, also while you lost connection, I was thinking that FTR and Young Bucks can have a winner-take-all match for their tag belts. I, that has me thinking that maybe the Briscoes are winning the tag belts this weekend, but I, I hope... that the Briscoes are winning the tag belts because the but Briscoes that's haven't what I, been involved. That's what I haven't been thinking. That's what I was thinking until, well, more on that later. Um... John Maybe Silver. Three way Briscoe's FTR and uh, Young Bucks. I hope not. They okay. do not need that. They don't need that shit. Right. This is going to be a good match as it is. We don't need the fucking Young Bucks in there to go, hey, you know what this story needs? Nonsensical flips. Do you know what this match ne needs? Me. You? Me. You know, me, as a Young Buck. Me, the Young Bucks, you know. All about me. Yeah, All you know. About me. Yo, hey, uh, yeah, FTR did a good promo, but you know what? Not gonna get five stars from Dave unless we're in it. <laughs> Matt, I would love to imagine what would happen if Dave Meltzer actually gave a bad review about the Bucks. Never will. It oh, no, would not be acknowledged. Let me put it this way. He probably has, like, said this isn't as good in the past, but... <sighs> Again, I want to emphasize this point. I like Dave Meltzer. I've met Dave Meltzer twice. Dave Meltzer is a really cool fucking guy to talk wrestling with. He is. Um, but, you know, the, the thing I say at the beginning of the show with the opinions or just that of anybody else, and mm -hmm. my opinion doesn't mean any more than CJ's or EZ's or any of you guys watching. What? That's Dave Meltzer. I don't understand why Dave Meltzer's ratings are the end-all, be-all in a lot of people's fucking minds about what is a good wrestling match. I really don't get it. Like, if you want to, like, see his opinion and be like, oh, okay, cool. I, I, you know, like you would, like, just, like, ring a review and, like, oh, oh, Dave really liked it. I disagree. Or Dave really liked it. I agree. Or Dave didn't like it. I disagree. Or whatever. Like, that's fine. There's matches that Dave gave high ratings to that I'm like, oh, maybe I should check out that match. I'm not aware that this match exists. And then I watched it. I'm like, yes, that was very good. Or no, that wasn't very good. Or whatever. So, like, in that sense, that's cool. I think it was back a couple years ago. Um, 
th- there was a match with from Pro Wrestling Noah that I, I didn't follow Noah that closely, but I heard some praise for a few matches the, from Dave, and then I went and watched matches. I'm like, yeah, these are good. Mm-hmm. But, you know, that they weren't good because Dave said they were good. They, you know, Dave got me to check them out, which is what a critic should do. But if you're going to tell me that the Young Bucks are a better tag team than FTR to you because Dave gave them more matches, I immediately don't really... Your, your argument with me, not that speaking for me, has lost credibility. The first time you say this is better, Dave Meltzer gave, we're done. I, I, I'm taking nothing you say seriously for the rest of that thing, for the rest of this discussion. If you say the Young Bucks are better because I like high-flying action, this, that, and the other, I'm going to disagree with you, but I will respect that opinion more than when you go, well, Dave said. It's a real Dave move there, Dave. <laughs> I'm curious if that com- if those sorts of commercials play in other areas of the United States or the world. Well, it's for CarbondaleHelpWanted.com. Yes, but I've listened to, I've heard some other ones from other, uh, in other areas where they like, it's another help wanted site. And they use the same thing. So I don't know if that's like something they take. They take that commercial and then go, hey, clevelandhelpwanted.com or, you know, St. Louis helpwanted.com or Chicago. <laughs> All right. So we now move on. To Silver and Alex Reynolds um, with the Butcher and the Blade, and John Silver wants his new friend, you know, because the Butcher's the you know the Meat Man. He gives him a Butch T-shirt and doesn't appreciate it, and that's bad. He's you know, good old Butcher is just trying to help him out because the name Butch is trademarked by another company, and he was just like, get that shit off TV before we get fired, man. I'm looking out for you, but like he. He was mad on the outside, but John looked into his eyes and he was like, we're bros. We're homies. I got you. Take my I got breath you. away. And, and I love you. Oh. And you, you're my best friend. Well, because nobody I'll... wearing a David Bowie shirt could be mean. You just can't. Well, Alex Reynolds is hurt now and... They're going to have a tag team match on Rampage with uh, John Silver's tag team partner being Hangman Page. <sighs> All right, look. I love the Dark Order. I will stand on the Dark Order. should be a lot bigger than they are. Hill and be willing to die on it. I've, I've gone to that hill before on this, this year program. It's, it's something I'm willing to do. But what you 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 haven't used the Dark Order well in nine months, and now you're putting the arguably your your top hero that's not injured right now in a storyline with him. It's like, but, huh? Like it makes sense, but it's like. Is this the right move? I don't know. It's like it, it feels like they don't know what they're doing with a lot of things right now. I understand the injury bug hit, and boy did it hit. Boy did it hit. But Forbidden Door showed like, hey, we can we can move on the fly, no problem, no problem. But now it's like, I just I don't get it. <laughs> <sighs> Anything else anybody wants to add? Nada. Not for this. Christian Cage and Luchasaurus defeated the Varsity Blondes. Um, I liked how uh, Christian got the pin after Luchasaurus did all the work. And uh, then Jungle Boy came back. (laughs) And what I predicted would happen happened. Luchasaurus was all a ruse. And it was Christian that got worked. (laughs) I didn't like this. I 
I saw this coming, but they could have done so much more with this. Like, it's not... I think they should have waited. Yeah, they should have waited, and maybe, like, they should have done something like, oh my god, Luchasaurus, no, no, and, like, he's beating up Jungle Boy, and then eventually, like, you know, no, don't do this, we're actually the real friends, and then you have the big, like, moment of, wait a minute, I remember who I am now. It's not with Christian. Like, that would have been a really cool and special moment, and they kind of squandered it. Or just have, like, a massive stare down in the ring. Like, nobody throws a punch, or you just see, like, Christian Cage beating up Jungle Boy again, and Luchasaurus just contemplating whether to, you know, help Christian or help Jungle. Yeah. Um, I, I would have kept Luchasaurus as a bad guy and, and had them have a match. Have Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus have a match. Have Luchasaurus yeah. just be... Christian's supposed to be a smart heel. Like, he he got worked. I I would have, like, saved this moment for All Out. Like, Jungle Boy versus Christian Cage and Luchasaurus is at Christian Cage's side, and then just when it looks like you know, Christian Cage has the upper hand, or he wants, he's demanding uh, like Luchasaurus, you know, beat him up and then he just turns around and he just stands next to Jungle Boy and they just do like a two-on-one beat up on him. Hmm. I mean, I would have I would have done something more to play this out until you can get it to paper. You could have really stretched this out a lot more. Okay, yeah. I completely forgot, like, you know, how long Jungle Boy was even out for. It's like, it didn't seem that About late. a month. About a month. Oh, about a month. Oh, wow. Because it was in St. Louis that that happened. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I would have waited this out. Next up, uh, the Gun Club declined a uh, match, the uh, a, a challenge to match the acclaim, but um, Austin Gunn wants Max Caster in a rap battle. Oh boy. Dear Lord. Epic rap battle. Of history. <laughs> Austin Gun versus Pulando Max Castor. Oh, Austin Gun has to bring up uh, Max Castor being one of Bobby Lashley's sisters. Now that I found that out. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, wasn't it Anthony Bowen? No, it was Max Castor. Oh, never mind. Don't go in that cliche direction, you. I was in, I literally wasn't <laughs> in that cliche direction, but I legit thought it was Anthony Bowen. No, it was Max Caster. I remember was the... he shared about it or something. Um, next up, we have the FTW Championship match. Ricky Starks versus Cole Carter. CJ, take it from here. Who the fuck is Cole Carter? Oh, do you not know who Cole Carter is? <sighs> here we go. Oh, do you not know? This is going to be fun. Um, Cole Carter, formerly of NXT fame, just got released a couple weeks ago from his NXT contract for failing a drug test. Oh, boy. Was working with a wrestler going by the name of Tony D'Angelo on NXT. And, And yes. The, the mental images of like the Mafia Sopranos shit that's coming to your mind when I say Tony D'Angelo is exactly what the gimmick is. Okay? Okay, we're all caught up here. So when they wrote him off of TV, they just had Tony D'Angelo say he's sleeping with the fishes. So this whole fucking match seems to be just one big goddamn joke for Tony Khan. Oh, he's sleeping with the fishes on NXT, so I'm gonna put him on my Shark Week. <laughs> Uh-huh. Like I'm not fucking laughing, and this has got nothing to do with the fact that it's. I mean, it has a little bit to do with Ricky Starks. Like part two is all about Ricky Starks, but this it was so goddamn pointless to take somebody just because they had been on WWE and you wanted to make a little joke and put him on Dynamite when we have gone for weeks talking about all of the talented people in AEW already yeah. that are grasping for TV time. That are relegated to dark and dark elevation when they have more talent than that. And when they have a fan base that supports them and would like to see them on television. Not even just a weekly basis, but a monthly basis. 
Well, so Private the, party. Uh, <laughs> Hook was fighting Ricky Starks and just beating the living shit out of him. Well, and I think we're getting called, there. Do I support Team Taz or do I support my son? I think we are getting there with what happened post post match where he threw another challenge out and Dan Housen answered the challenge. Ricky Starks did a great Dan Housen impression. He did a fantastic match. He had a fantastic match. AEW didn't upload this to YouTube. I'm like, I'm hearing these things like, wait, what? I'm out of loop on this. What? Uh, Because we don't necessarily want to put Ricky Starks over, I guess. I don't, I don't know. Why, why did he have like a super competitive match with a dweeb. Why, why did that happen? Why was that match booked the way it was? I mean, yeah, he won, but it, it, it was super competitive. It, it it made the dweeb look good. Bravo for the dweeb. You know, I would wonder what happened if Dan Housen won the FTW title. <laughs> I don't think Dan Housen's going to win it, so I think that Ricky Starks will probably pull some shenanigans. And then they're going to pull back to the Hookhausen thing. Yeah. And then and Hook and Ricky. Like, oh, shit, here we go. And they'll do the title match at, at the pay-per-view. They'll do it all out. That, that should be your opener. Not, like, buy it. That's your opener. Yeah. I'd be okay I with that. Don't, I'm going to cry. <laughs> when Ricky like, loses this, this belt. Great. This is great. Ricky's going to lose the belt at the show that I'm going to. Like, I'm going to. And I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be a I'm happy gonna play camper. the world's smallest violin. I'm not going to be a happy... Everybody else, this will be um, part two of our all-out experience from last year. CM Punk won, and everybody just cheered and cheered and cheered, except for the person who sat next to me who booed vociferously. This mm-hmm. is going to be the opposite for, you know, just me this time. Ricky <laughs> is going to lose, Hook's going to win, everybody's going to lose their mind, and I will boo vociferously. And so you're <laughs> and he'll be and the crowd will be happy and the internet. The is that what I'm hearing? You're no longer a hooker if that happens. Dan Housen or a hook I wasn't the hooker. He was I'm, the I'm the hooker. Um, you know, hook will win and the crowd will go happy and the internet will go happy, be happy, and I'll die a little on the inside. <laughs> but yeah. Um. So after that, we have a. Promo with Statlander, Athena, and Willow Nightingale. Athena, this interview is all over the place, and it felt like it could have used a little more structure. There's a lot of things that could have used a little bit more structure on this. Like, there's a lot of production snafus, and oh, one big one. We're going to get to that. Oh, boy. But next, we have something that had no snafus and was amazing. FTR promo talking about... Um, the upcoming match and it's maybe the promo of the year and I'm not going to say anything else about it because nothing I say about it will do it justice. This is on YouTube. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. But fight like an eight... Fight fight like an eight-year-old girl. Yeah, fight like an eight-year-old girl. I will point out the fact that you notice like we're building on this match. We've talked about it a lot with the Briscoes, but we don't see the Briscoes. Other than in the graphic, we we don't see a video from the Briscoes. We don't see the Briscoes on TNT or TBS. Yeah. Anybody else? Maybe they're going to be a no-show? <laughs> no, no. I think they're going to show up for the pay-per-view. I just think that that's probably a Discovery Warner decision to not let them on TV. Yeah. So that's kind of why I they're, lean not- they're not going to oh. win the titles because... Uh, no, no, it was this promo that made me think, hey, now maybe they won't win. But I know last week we were thinking, hey, maybe it is the Brit. Maybe they're not going to have FTR have all the belts like we thought. But I don't think they're going to let FTR have all the belts like we thought. But I don't think. They're yeah, gonna- the Young Bucks got to win the feud because they're the fucking they're they're the greatest tag team of all time, ain't you heard? Um. Jade Cargill and Kira Hogan defeated Willow Nightingale and Athena. This was okay. This was really kind of clunky. There were a couple botched spots in this match. There was some stuff I liked. There was stuff I didn't like. That's why I'm giving it the okay rating. It was a little rough. It was a little rough. Oh, until we get to our main event. Mm-hmm. Well, 
yeah in, in light of the whole show like this wasn't the roughest point and it you know, i get it jade is still new she's she's still very new she can't think on but even athena and hogan had spots that were just like that it's gonna be on botch mania it just is Oh, yeah. There was one really big uh, suplex spot that they just could not get. And they kept trying and trying and trying. Like, the, you guys aren't new to this. You two are both very good wrestlers, and I don't understand what's going on here right now. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> so, next up, we have... Well, first of all, we had a... Uh, Essentially, uh, Britt Baker say that I'm tired of Thunder Rosa. And, I mean, Thunder, and Thunder Rosa's title reign has not been, uh, not been written well. Another news. Water is wet. Water is wet and a cup of coffee was served at a Starbucks restaurant today. <laughs> and Toronto is still the greatest city in the whole world. That's fake news. That's fake news. Well, how many condos do you guys have? <laughs> I mean, personally, none, but yeah. St. Louis has quite there's, a few condos. There's quite a few condos in St. Louis, yeah. Literally, my first reaction when coming back from Toronto is I'm just looking around like, where the fuck did all these condos come from? Gentrification. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Barbed wire everywhere, match. Ruby Soho supposedly okay. has... Control over the shark cage. Gimmick alert. Yeah. This match was not terrible. The match, the entering product, was not terrible except for a couple snafus there at the end. The wrong person winning. That was, other than that, like, the match itself was not terrible. Disagree about the, the outcome. Yeah, the outcome was... So you think Jericho should have won? Yeah, I think that Jericho winning was the right decision. Elaborate. I was, I was indifferent on the result, really. Moxley needs an opponent for before All Out. If CM Punk is coming back at All Out, which I assume is the plan. Moxley needs another opponent. Moxley... Did we say the words John Moxley yet talking about this show? Because he appeared on it multiple times. The interim world champion appeared multiple times. And we really didn't say much about him. Like he was ancillary in, in the tag match. It, it really wasn't about him. And that's fine. But he is the world champion. And he was kind of an afterthought. It's kind of a theme on these shows sometimes. But he needs somebody. He needs somebody kind of relevant, somebody bigger to face um, and to not have eliminator matches to get there. And Chris Jericho has a legitimate claim to that. Hey, I've been a world champion. I've been on this winning streak, basically, especially in his singles matches. I beat Eddie. I, I I beat. I did this. I did this, and I, I've. This also might be at that. all out. This also may not even be before all out. They may make this a match it at, at all out. If CM Punk is coming. If CM Punk is ready to come back at all out, then it happens before, and it builds up John yeah. Moxley's legitimacy. Now, as a if, if CM Punk isn't going to come back until like after all out, then then yeah. you have a legitimate championship match to present in Chicago. Yeah. It is a win-win that Jericho is set up in a win on this match so that you can present him as the next challenger, either within the next two months or at All Out. It That's a win-win. So would you you would rather prefer Jericho versus Punk? No, it'll be Jericho versus Moxley one way or another. Because Mox beat Jericho for the title. Yeah. So Jericho's kind of come back and be like, well, now I'm this and now I'm this. And maybe he brings back the Painmaker again to face Mox. 
that's fine if he wants to do that or if he just wants to be Chris Jericho against John Moxley. But either that will happen before All Out and the All Out match will be Moxley versus CM Punk or CM Punk isn't ready for that and it'll be Moxley versus Jericho at All Out. And Eddie didn't lose anything in this because Eddie didn't give a shit about winning or losing a match because this wasn't a match to Eddie. It was just... I need a legal way to punish you. And if you look at the end result, especially going off the air with Jericho laying in the spider web of barbed wire, he didn't look like a winner. Yeah. He won the match. It was and a it's big fine. Booty. Yeah, I mean he didn't look like a victor in this. And and that's fine too. Neither of them were hurt by the way that ultimately ended. I had a bigger problem with the, we have to have the shark cage so that we put Ruby Soho out there and Mm. Anna J turn. Well, let's, yeah, let's, let's, let's talk about that. Ty Conti runs out to attack Ruby Soho. Anna J runs out, you know, after hearing, you know, we hear Dark Order is forever. And then, oh wait, no, I'm just kidding. I'm with Ty still. I'm bad. So I turned. Like, what? And then Anna like, J turned. Yeah. I'm like, why? It's like very good I question. I was like, oh, Anna J's a bad guy. Now I was like, no, I'm actually legit wondering why. Because why they're besties and involved with the Terracor Appreciation Society. Yeah. It's like no. why would if if your whole thing, if 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 Sammy and Ty have already like you know they're with the Jericho Appreciation Society. They're members. You say the Jericho Appreciation Society is going in the cage. They put Sammy and Ty in the cage. Mm-hmm. And also build a cage. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't not put Sammy in the cage. And the, or at least have him be in the fucking shark costume. That seems to be Sammy's thing. It's wearing the costume and taking it off and it's him. But then, oh, but then. So... Ty gets the, they, they lower the shark cage. Ty gets the key. She can't open the fucking cage. So the smaller members of Jericho Appreciation Society start escaping the cage through the cracks in the cage. And they shoot it! They shoot it! They don't say, hey, get the camera off of that and let's, you know, pretend yeah. she got over it. They shoot it! What's worse They fucking is- shoot it! No, this this gets worse. This does get worse. So they're shooting it, and they're shooting the struggles with Ty trying to get the lock undone and getting the lock undone. And right as they cut, she hands the key to Daniel Garcia to see if he can get it undone, and they cut back to the ring, only to cut back to the cage just when they are coming through the bars. You already cut off. You've already cut off that feed. Watch in the truck, see what happens. And as they're running out of the cage, YouTube as well. Like, yeah, it's it wasn't a good look in a way. But if you're gonna make a shark cage to keep people out of a match, then make it small enough so that the smallest people can't fit into it. And if you're at least going to do something like, if you're going to have that like as a, as a safeguard in case this happens, don't fucking shoot it. Don't put that on camera. If you're going to have a safeguard, then don't make a real lock. Gimmick the lock. This was just. They've had problems with this kind of shit before. Stop using real locks. This was like the ultimate, like, have you learned nothing from the last time when you, when something fucked up not having a safeguard in place? Have you learned nothing? There's like two things that everybody with basic knowledge should know how the fuck they work. Putting on a seatbelt when you get on an airplane and turning a lock with, like, unlocking a lock with your key. Like, I'm like, how the fuck are they struggling and how the... How did they escape the cage and then kick at the lock? I was like, are you guys fucking serious? Like, it was just a normal little key lock. Like, I, I don't understand what the problem they was. They cost a dollar at, like, your local dollar store. Like, you can't get, like, a simple mm-hmm. master lock. You just slip in, unlock, boom. Like, 
Yes. Seriously. Yeah, and it I wasn't like the, the ridiculous key rings either. Like, it was one key, one lock, ta da I, I don't... It clearly worked because eventually we get um, the bigger guys coming out of the cage. It so, like I mean, it, it, it worked. One of those combo locks? Okay, maybe I could get them some tiny slack that they couldn't get it open like maybe they just can't get the combo open but this is key into piece turn click do you know what i would have done well i'm i'm a proponent of if you're going to use the gimmick then use the gimmick correct like don't don't overbook it to be like oh i'm going to use the shark cage but they're going to get out of it like if you're going to use the shark cage respect the gimmick and use the fucking shark cage or make honestly, it work it way better if they could have been like screaming at uh like Ty Conti saying hey what are you doing you can't get us open like yo, what's going on get us out yeah. of here if it's me I put I put a master lock on it to where nobody else knows the code good luck fucking getting them out there because I put a code on there and nobody else can get it but me and I'm not going to give you that fucking code or honestly, imagine if Anna J was unlocking it, like she had the key, and she's like, "Sorry, boys, like, I'm just walking away with the key." You know? No, no, that would have gone into the fucking turn that they did for Anna J. Yeah, stupid. Then she wouldn't come away as a bad guy with her best friend, like. Mm-hmm. Or better yet, yeah, why was Anna J in there to begin with? She shouldn't have been. The the, the only the, the only way that this would the only way you use Anna J in this is if she doesn't go with Ty and like no 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 I'm not on your side Dark Order forever. That's how you Stop do it. Stop the shenanigans and lets the match continue with all gimmick integrity. And then you can build up to a Ty versus Anna match. Hey, a secondary women's match without a belt on the line. Hey, hey, now you're giving AEW ideas. Good! Good one, too! You can use it! Yeah. This one's free, TK! Yeah. And also, and I said this before we went on the air, that I think from now on, AEW should stop doing barbed wire matches, period. Because ev- any time we have barbed wire in a match, something bad happens. Moxley Omega, Maryland City Council, or like something about some sports council in, Mar- in Baltimore or in Maryland, they got pissed off thinking it was way too violent. Revolution 2021, we obviously know what happened with that one, and now with this, the shark cage could not get open. Yeah. Like, I think just, let's stop for now. Yep. Uh, I mean, like, I, I, I still like the idea of using a barbed wire match, because, like, it, it, they can be executed well, like, but... If you have a barbed wire match, period, like, not just, like, an extreme rules match where barbed wire is, is part of the collection, no, if you have a plain barbed wire match something's going something bad's going to happen i am i'm still not convinced that jericho is coming out of this completely okay i don't know i don't know how the fuck he bled that much he's a wizard well he's been on blood thinners since december (laughs) yeah so like he's not gonna do a fucking barbed wire death match he, he can't bleed. That's why he didn't bleed at Blood and Guts. Like, it's a bad idea for him to bleed. Like, the first thing that they do is they cut him open. I'm like, holy fuck. I'm, I thought I was going to watch Ric Flair die in the ring. Turns out it's going to be Chris Jericho. Hmm. And they did take him out on a stretcher. I mean, I'm sure that that was part of the whole story, but... I, I just, um, tomorrow, Chris Jericho's Friday podcast will come out, and I'll be a little bit more okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, that is uh, the end of this uh, other debacle. Um, we'll no longer be live. We'll all be taped like this one is here, except for the first half. It's like, it, it's like Halloween Havoc 1998. Until <laughs> I can get some better equipment, because I think that that'll help. Hopefully. We'll see. Yes. We'll see. But we want to thank you all for sticking with us and sticking with the awkward silence in the middle of this. If I didn't edit it, we're going to see if I can with the 
Windows Movie Editor. Um, but if you enjoyed, please give a like, share, subscribe for more content, not just from the world of wrestling, but from the world of comic books, anime, gaming, and all things geek culture. Follow me on my social media pages, facebook.com slash athleticgeek89, twitter athletic underscore geek89, instagram athleticgeek89. CJ, do you still have social media? Yes, at CJTmall0. All right, and uh, EZ, do you still have social media? Of course, you can get the Twitter at E R I K Z A R I N S at Eric Zadins. All right, wrestling with me. Yep, uh, for CJ and EZ, we're just Marks, and we're out. Have a good one.